Dr. Shomitra Dotto. I'm a pediatric consultant based at Bhagirathi Nyotia Newtown Hospital. And uh, with the second wave of the corona sort of devastating the world, and especially India, and more and more kids getting affected, I think it's, uh, I, I think it's necessary to discuss certain guidelines for the treatment of children with COVID. Children usually don't have a lot of symptoms. It's usually in a family where there's a family of three or four, when uh, the, any other member of the uh, family is affected and children usually present with a little bit of cough cold, a little bit of malaise, a body ache, a little bit of runny nose, a little bit of intractable cough. So that's always present and you know, they usually don't suffer a lot. And, uh, but in about 1% of kids, they might get affected in a severe way. And the, the, uh, the time that you need to be really worried about, or in other words, the danger signs are if there's an uncontrolled cough, is that there's hectic temperature, which persists for about four or five days, breathlessness, difficulty in breathing, the child grunting, uh, uh, that's the way the child is breathing, breathing very fast, becoming bluish along the lips or the hands, feet. The circulation limbs seems not well. The child is lethe has lethargy, is drowsy, becoming confused and complaining of uh, abdominal pain, vomiting. You know, all these things in a little one with COVID warrants an immediate attention by a doctor. And this is the time when you really need to see a specialist. Now, what are the things that you really need to know about COVID in children? COVID usually is a very harmless disease, a very uh, innocuous disease in children. And it usually doesn't uh, affect a lot, but in certain children, specifically with those who have congenital heart disease, who have had a bad asthma, whose chest is really bad, had had recurrent pneumonias, uh, or in children with immunodeficiencies who have been on high dose steroids for different other conditions, you know, these uh, is the group of children who usually get affected. Ex premature babies, you know, COVID can you know, sort of you know affect any baby, you know, from one month old up to uh, about 16, 18 years of age. And the higher the age, the more the child is uh, prone to be affected. Fortunately, the third wave, which has been predicted to be, uh, to, which is supposed to go and affect a lot of children, is not true. I mean, there are more numbers of uh, children who are getting going to get affected, but that's because of the fact that the disease is spreading rapidly. More families are getting affected and so more children will get affected, but there's nothing to panic so much about the third wave. Now, there is one condition called MISC, which is uh, a complication of COVID, which happens to a very, very few children, but it can happen less than about 1% of the kids. And that usually happens after a month or so of uh, the child suffering COVID, when the child may have uh, bloating of the body, abdominal pain, swelling of the face, high temperature, eyes and face might get swollen up, accumulation of fluid inside the body. So it's basically a multi-inflammatory a disease which affects all the organs of the body, but that happens very, very rarely. It often affects the heart also. I mean, it, it's very rare and there's nothing to get worried about it, but certain children can definitely have these things. So it's easy to know. Now, what are you going to do when the child has got COVID? Uh, first of all, the child, uh, it, you have to understand that medicines do not help. A lot of people are going to talk to you about vitamins and vitamin C and, you know, things like doxycycline, steroids, remdesivir and, you know, azithromycin. Uh, I, uh, nothing really, ivermectin, nothing really works with COVID and there's no proven evidence. And whatever I'm saying is basically a summary of uh, the uh, recommendations of the UNICEF, Indian Academy of Pediatrics the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, as well as studies from all in the Institute of Medical Sciences. So basically, what is very important is to keep the child at home. So home quarantine for the whole family, if possible. And the child, if it's more than a two year old, the child may wear a mask. It's better to wear a medical mask. A medical mask means an N95 mask or its substitute, which is equally effective and it has to cover the nose as well as the mouth, that is very important. And there should be sufficient distancing, possibly a meter distance if possible, but keep the child at home. If there are other members of the family who are COVID, then you can stay together. If the mother is positive and the child is also positive, the child is to stay with the mother. 
and mother can breastfeed the child. That's one very important point. No way breastfeeding should be stopped whether the baby is positive or the mother is positive. If the mother is positive but the child is negative, then if the mother is not very unwell, then the baby can stay with the mom. If there is a carer to look after the baby and the baby being negative but the mother is positive, then that carer can take a, a, a sort of look after the child. But we have to understand that if the mother breastfeeds a baby or handles the baby and the mother is positive, it's better to wear a double mask use sanitizers, wash the hands frequently, wash the breast, make sure that the child has got a, has a regular soap bath. Soap bath ventilation is very important. By ventilation, I mean open the doors and windows and make sure that the air circulates in the room. If it's very hot, you can use the AC. But remember, the room has to be kept clean. That is very important. Paracetamol should be given to the child every four to six hours. There is no role of antibiotics. Yes, you can give a vitamin if you want to. If you can measure the saturations of a baby, it's difficult because of the fact that babies have specific saturation monitors. If you can have it, then well, you can use it. Otherwise, for a bigger child, you can use a normal saturation twice a day. But remember, if the child has any of the danger signs that I've told you, if the saturations drop less than 94%, then uh, you need to rush to the hospital. Uh, the standard precautions of, uh, you know, mask, wearing mask appropriately, uh, avoiding public places, gatherings, group play is very important. One very important uh, thing is not to disseminate false information over the net. Social media is a place which is full of false evidence, false uh, information, and that needs to be dissipated. That's, uh, that does not need to be dissipated, I'm sorry. And uh, so you have to make sure that you encourage people. The nutrition should be appropriate. It, you should have, uh, the child should have a proper, uh, you know, uh, uh, rich protein diet, that, that's very important. And breastfeeds are definitely yes, yes. For mothers, you can breastfeed and definitely don't forget to vaccinate yourselves, even though you are breastfeeding. That's another important point. Remember, you must vaccinate yourself and the child at the earliest opportunity. The vaccines for the children are not yet available, but they should be there in about a few months from now. There's a lot of research going on all over the world and also in India. And I'm pretty sure we'll be able to come up with a vaccine for the child as soon as possible. You know, maybe within a few months. And once the vaccination is all, please do vaccinate. There have been, we have lost a lot of time, lots, a lot of energy, lost a lot of resources by not vaccinating ourselves. So we shouldn't make that mistake once again. We should vaccinate our children as quickly as possible and also ourselves. Thank you. Thank you.